Hello, I'm Jane Hall and welcome to the new series of Weddings. Well, right now we're filming with some fantastic couples all over the country. We're going to encounter the emotions of organising their wedding and, of course, the drama and excitement of the day itself. We are here today to solemnise a marriage in accordance with the Australian Can you Marriage hear that? Act. Whoa! <laughs> Wayne is a very kind hearted person. I worship the ground she walks on. I told him no sex for at least the whole week. There was a lot riding on that kiss, that first kiss. It was revolting, but every first kiss is. These girls are grouse. I knew this would be stressful. I can just feel it. Well, it was definitely not love at first sight. I didn't think it was going to be this hard. Is this what was there? Oh, oh my god, it. guess what we forgot? Hang on. That I hang am. On. <laughs> now, every week we're going to be following two very different couples on their way to the altar. So, to start, let's meet Paul and Natasha, who first came together through their love of music. Uh, well, I was playing in a band that wasn't really going anywhere at the time and we didn't have a singer, so I was advertising for a singer in, in the local music stores. I never rung one before and it was the first one I rung and we talked on the phone for about three hours the first night and then he rang me back the next night and the next night. And then I actually met her at a nightclub one night and uh, we really hit it off. Nine months later, Natasha and Paul moved in together and after a few years, decided to build a house. The day the bank approved their loan, Paul popped the question. Well, I burst into tears straight away and, um, yeah, I was just so shocked. <laughs> Since I've met him, I laugh every day. I'm happy pretty much every day. Um, yeah, he's a gentleman and he's, he's loyal and he's so sweet and he's romantic and I'm a hopeless romantic. With that in mind, it's a romantic theme that Natasha and Paul want for their wedding outfits. Well, it was going to be medieval where we're going to go like King Henry VIII. Now it's it's more, um, we're just going for more of the period look. Not not authentic, you know, historically, yeah, it's not authentic, but it's yeah. atmospheric. Yeah. Uh, well, the shoes are going to be uh, just standard shoes, black, uh, and we'll put leggings down from the calves just to make it look like, uh, like pirate boots. No, I'm not going to get that on you. It needs one that'll do up down the back. Um, I always imagine you're going to walk out going fee, fi, fo, fum. Well, that's what the look is, isn't it? I've been to a lot of weddings and seen everybody look roughly the same. So I just wanted something that, you know, you could blow it up and put it on the wall and people would say, oh, well, what's that? And you'd say, well, that's your wedding. You know, something a bit different. Well, now it's Natasha's turn, so Paul is banished to the car. Now, what we've got to get is that to come to there. Oh, it's too, made it too big for you, Tash. Wow, something's too big for me for one. Yeah, way too big. Natasha started with just the dress and some ideas when she stumbled across Trisha, who specialises in fantasy wedding outfits. You can walk into a dressmaker's and say, I want this, but unless they're, they're doing costumes all the time and know what they're doing. So, I don't know, maybe my dreams wouldn't have been realised if I hadn't have walked in here. You're a clever girl. Oh, I love it. I'm wrapped. It came to me the other night in bed. I thought, do you lie awake at night thinking of me? <laughs> lie awake thinking of this dress, yeah. And the wedding really isn't that far away. But right now it's back to our first couple, Natasha and Paul. And it's time for the bridal party to have their fittings. Now remember, they're having a theme wedding, so let's see how they're going. Oh, that's very romantic. Paul's brother, Mark, is one of the groomsmen. Is it, a little bit. Is it too baggy? Or? Yeah, that's it's what we're just baggy. talking about. We're just going to try the leggings so that we can get a bit of a, a look. So the boots will pull it in and the, the pants will be a lot baggy. Yeah. That looks great. And now it's the girls' turn. The oh. shoes don't go with it. Yeah. Of course what do you think, Tash? Good. That looks great. I definitely wanted um, purple. That reminds me of royalty um, velvet, that whole rich fabrics. And I just happened to stumble across these for $25 each and I thought, you can't go wrong. They were covered in dust. They were creased, they were stained, they looked disgusting <laughs> when I first saw them and I, I just knew I picked up a bag and got them cleaned and they came up beautifully and I was just really lucky. 
It's just it just worked out. I was meant to. I'd, I was meant to have them. I was meant to have them. The only problem was altering an adult-sized dress to fit the flower girl. <laughs> yeah, that dress was big enough to fit me. Yeah, mm. so a wonderful job. Oh, it was a complete cool. remake. Let's try oh, she this. She looks like one of those little porcelain dolls. <laughs> what do you think? Mm, it's okay. <laughs> okay? Don't you think you look beautiful? Yeah. <laughs> with the bridal party sorted out, the next task is to order the cake in keeping with the style of their wedding. It sort of dates back to medieval times. It's like a, a prince and a princess, so this is our castle. <laughs> so we basically drew, <laughs> a a, we drew a picture of uh, a castle and uh, tried to make that into a cake. And uh, this purple velvet is going to be the, the moat leading up to the castle. Do you want any stained glass? You think, um, what colour? Green. Purple? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can have a bit of purple. It comes to roughly about 400 to 450, but oh, leave it's it still decent, really. Yeah. That's really I mean, good. I originally saw a castle cake and it was 850 or something. And it'll be really, but everything cake, will be done. You eat it. <laughs> it's like 850 times. As well as the costs involved in planning a wedding, there's so much that has to be organised. I mean, there's a lot of heartache. Um, involved and there's a lot of I mean you had a million dollars yeah and we've been living together for three three years now and uh, you know there's fights about money involved with uh, putting it all together and there's uh, you know the arguing about how we're going to do it and not always agreeing on exactly which way to do it uh, it's pretty hard yeah, so his idea I didn't think when I when I asked Natasha to marry me I didn't think it was going to be this hard I thought it was going to be pretty simple but no sorry <laughs> Newly married couples have long been showered with blessings to ensure an affluent and fertile future together. Originally those things included wheat, nuts, rice and the odd bit of dry bread. Maybe the introduction of paper confetti wasn't such a bad idea after all. This is Cherie. Up next, a kitchen tea with a twist. So you have a, who knows how to open champagne? <laughs> I don't normally drink, so I don't know how to open a corkscrew. I mean, you just, you just screw it in. <laughs> no, how do you do it? I don't know. <laughs> One of the long-standing rituals of the lead-up to a wedding is the Bucks Night, and Paul's will be a little bit different. He's gathered his mates around for an afternoon of go-karting, but things aren't going exactly to plan. Firstly, welcome to Le Mans. My name is Merv. I'll be hosting you for this evening. You've got um, a 10-minute warm-up and then two 20-lap races. If you'd like to come through, we'll, uh, we'll get you all geared up. You've got all your helmets. The steering wheel's too close to me. Try another one there. Don't set the airbag off, Paul. No. <laughs> <laughs> you need something with the steering wheel right up. Don't think it's going to fit. Try this one because it's laid back more. No. Gonna, I won't be able to get in there. The steering wheel's too close. We're going to have to convert a car for you. younger and I've been not really into that sort of thing now so this gives us a good opportunity to get together and uh, it's a fantastic feeling going you know 60 mile an hour two inches off the off the ground let's hear it for Paul it doesn't fit yeah. 